how did this come together? Because uh, you were kind of in an interesting limbo there for a while where you were outside of UFC. You were doing a talk show. Obviously, you were a very outspoken guy. Were they hesitant at all to bring you back in? Of course they were. I haven't been back in in four and a half years. I, mean, I think they're really hesitant to bring me back in. Um, it's, I don't know. You know, honestly, I don't know how it worked. I, I made a phone call. I begged. Uh, I got a phone call a couple hours later. We started working on a contract, and that's kind of how how it worked out. Man. And, and, and let, let's not mix words. It wasn't like, hey, oh, my gosh, bring trick call. Let's just bring him back in. It was, eh, it's not going to hurt us, so why not bring him back in? It's not going to do anything against us. You might as well bring him back in for a little while and see what happens. I mean, but, I mean, they didn't, it's like they need me back at the welterweight division. They got all the guys but two, you know, that are in the top ten are all fighting the UFC. I mean, they don't, they, they, a guy to sell a fight, they got plenty of guys to do that. Guys that look good, they got plenty of guys to do that. Guys that can go out there and, and stand or toe toe and bang, they got plenty of guys that can do that. They don't really need me to come back in, but it, you know, it, it, it's kind of the way it works, you know. Right. Uh, and you know, times have changed too. I, I, I think when you were, uh, dropping fights to guys like Matt Hughes and George St. Pierre and they were trying to build the rest of the division, I don't know that a Frank Trigg was really going to help them by knocking off their reality stars that they were trying to build. No, not at all. You got to remember, back then it was only eight shows a year. Eight shows a year. I think they throw eight shows a month now. I mean, so it's completely changed. It's totally different. Back then I would have been a gatekeeper. I would have been a journeyman where I get to beat up everybody that's coming up and they can't develop them at all, you know? And, and you're right, Steve. It, it was, it was very smart on their part to let me go the last time. And, and I'm hoping it's going to be very smart on their part this time to bring me back. So you excited to face one of those reality guys that they probably wanted to keep you away from years ago and Josh Koshek? Well, I, I wish they would have gave me an easier fight. You know, I wish they would have gave me a tomato can, but uh, they took me right to the wolves. Like, here, hold this. I mean, it, it's uh, it's definitely not going to be an easy task for me, but uh, it's okay. I'll take it. You know, if this is what they're going to give me and this is how they want to set me up, then 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 I got to I got to be appreciative they brought me back. And part of being appreciative that they brought me back is to be appreciative of who they put in front of you. And Josh Keck, Josh Koshek is a great opponent for me. So let's just go step forward and take it. Frank Trigg with us here on DC and the Sunshine Man. Whack him Wednesday, ESPN Radio 1100. He's fighting Josh Koshek next week. UFC 103 has returned to UFC after uh, four plus years away. Um, is it a good fight or a bad fight for you? I know he's tough, but do you want to face a, another top level wrestler? We hear all the time that you're like the strongest guy wrestling from a strength standpoint at 170, or is this like a nightmare matchup? Uh, it's a mirror matchup. I'm fighting me in a mirror. He's right handed, I'm left handed. We're fighting each other in a mirror. That, that's what's happening. Um, for every hole I see in his game, is a flaw I have in my game, so we're trying to fix it. Uh, and, and so it makes it for an interesting, it makes for an interesting fight. But for me, I think it's a great fight. I'm way bigger than I was when I fought, when I fought 170 before. I'm a lot bigger at 170. I'm a lot, I'm a lot better now at the weight class because I spent so many years up at 185 and trying to develop how to, how to, how to maintain and, and, and put that strength and that style and that power against guys that, that are way bigger than me. But now I'm back on my natural fighting weight. I mean, not necessarily my natural weight, but my natural fighting weight. It should be a welterweight at 170, and so now we get to see what the you know what what French chicken put together. Now I think you would argue that uh, and you lost to use twice and George St. Pierre once. That those two guys are two of the best, if not the best, MMA wrestlers at 170 the sport has ever seen. Um, is there any ch- uh, Koshek's really decorated collegiate wrestler? Is there any chance he gets you down and you can't get up? Oh, yeah, absolutely, there's a chance he can, he can take me down, but I can get up. Um, you just have to you just have to want it. Getting off getting off your back on the ground, you just have to want it. You have to want to get up. If you don't want to get up, you can sit there all day long and take the punishment, kind of hold the guy in, in tight and not, not get real damage. But if you want to get up and really get into the fight, you can get yourself back up again, especially against a guy like Koscheck. He's not a great submission guy, even though he does have some submissions. He's not a great submission guy where he's going to hold you down. But the moment he sits up to punch you, he's going to give you space to get away to take advantage of it. So what's it like as an older guy? You're 37 or 38? 37. 37. Uh, I've heard Rick Franklin talk about this. Um, as you're, you know, kind of winding down the career, because I don't know that anyone looks at Randy Couture and goes, yeah, I can do that at 46. What's it like now in terms of drive? Because I heard Franklin talking the other day that, you know what, title shots, eh, if they, uh, if they happen, they happen. Uh, he was saying that more important than title shots are just putting on good fights. I could not believe when he said, um, I'm not really that bothered by uh, not getting a revenge fight against Dan Henderson because the fans really weren't into it. Um, I'm I'm cut from a different cloth. I'm a different guy. Um, my whole purpose of coming back to UFC and actually begging to come back to UFC was the fact I wanted to fight of the top ten guys. Well, the number one guy in the world, the welterweight division, the number one guy at 170 pounds has the title. Whether it's St. Pierre or it's somebody else when I get there, whoever it is, he will be number one in the world. And for me to be able to go in there and battle that guy, I've got to be willing to put myself in that space. And, and I want to, you know, I want to go out my, and end my career and go, look, 
I may I may fail at it miserably, but I want to be able to go look. At least I try to get up there and get that title. I try to get a third run at that title. I've already had two solid runs. I want to get one more solid run at that title and see if I can't finally get the title that's eluded me. And if I don't get it, I'm going to go out there and put my best foot forward to make this thing happen. But for, the, but for me to come in and put on just go, eh, I just want to put on good fights, that's not the kind of athlete I am. I don't want to do that. I'm not worried about putting on good fights. I'm worried about going on there and trying to win matches to get myself in the title hunt again. That's my whole mindset, my whole goal. But I'm also uber, uber competitive. You know, and, and, and believe me, I think if Rich Fang gets another shot of, gets another shot of a title shot, he's taking it. He's not going to turn it down. He's 100% going to go after it. So it just kind of depends on where you are in your career and what you want to do. How's Trigonomics doing? And you got anything that'll fit Steve? <laughs> um, yeah, actually, I do have stuff that'll fit Steve, but I shut the company down. You did? Um, unless you're Terrell Owens, you, if you play in the major leagues of your sport, whatever it is, NFL, NBA, NHL, whatever it is, you are not doing 17 other things. So I stopped broadcasting my radio show. Uh, even though the radio show still goes on strong, it just goes on without me. And I shut down, I shut down Trigonomics and sent a deal with uh, Silver Star. That, that's all I did. You know, it's just uh, uh, um, because I shut down Trigonomics. Um, Don Foreman over at United Nissan became one of my sponsors immediately to help pick up some of the slack that I lost from, from Trigonomics. Silver Star comes on board immediately as one of my as my clothing sponsor. So it actually was smarter for me to shut my companies down and, and kind of do do my do just be a professional fighter. Like I'm giving myself just to be a professional fighter for a while and see how I do with that. Let's, let's just try that for a little while and see what happens. Frank Triggs with us, UFC 103, uh, about 10 days away next Saturday in Dallas. So tell people without naming the numbers, uh, what's it like now as a fighter with how big the UFC is versus, say, five years ago with the money you make, not only in the cage, but more importantly, outside of the cage? Um, you know, for me, it's about the same. Okay. It really hasn't, it really hasn't changed that much. Uh, but when I left, I was the top end. I was I was the top of the top when I left, and now I'm kind of you know on the bottom. You know I'm I'm unranked. You know this is the first time in probably nine years I haven't been ranked in top ten at, at, at some kind of a weight class. You know this is the first time I haven't been ranked. It's because I dropped out of eighty five and came out of welter and haven't fought yet at welter, so I'm unranked. Um, I'm unheard of. You know eighty percent of the of the fans out there have no idea who the hell I am. They've never heard of me. Never seen me fight live. Always sees the replays on Spike and me getting my butt kicked by the GSP or by, or by Hughes. Um, they don't know anything about me. You know, I'm going to this fight as a four to one underdog, and, and rightfully so because there is no knowledge about me because I haven't fought on the big show yet. So with me being on the pay per view card this next Saturday is going to help out a lot. And, you know, so in the future it'll be a lot better. But believe me, I have no complaints about anything that's going on right now because I also understand where my where my plot is in life. Being a little bit older. You don't get jealous about what that guy has and what that guy does and what the, where's the, what's that guy getting over there? How come I can't have the same thing? Well, you know what? That guy's getting what he gets because more people know who he is. Once they know who you are, you get the same you get the same shake, and that's just what's going to happen. Hey, real quick before we let you go, can you judge uh, Belfort and Franklin objectively? Or are you uh, so married to Extreme Couture? I know I know Vitor comes in there. Well, but what do you think of that fight? You know, I think it's a really good fight. I think uh, Rich comes in there. You know, it's two left-handed guys. I think uh, Vitor's striking is a little bit better. I think his speed is a little bit better, but I think Rich's tenacity is a lot better. His aggressiveness to change positions. I think Vitor plants his feet a little bit too much. I think Rich has the, or has the great ability to actually move in the middle of something. As he's getting hit, he doesn't just back straight up. He actually moves to the side a little bit. And both guys have, have great, have great ground game for what they use it for. Now, obviously, Vitor wants to hold the guy down and punch him, and Rich wants to hold the guy down, down and punch him. But, you know, for how they use their ground game, both guys are really good. I think it's going to be a very, very close fight. But I have to be honest with you, at 195, I have to give the advantage to Rich Franklin. I want to give it to Vitor Belfort because he is one of my training partners, but I have to give it to Rich Franklin.